Aromatime Bistro presents Wine Time Live, hosted by the Hudson Valley's premier green certified entrepreneurs, Marcus and Jamie Giuliano. So grab a glass of your favorite vino, sit back, relax, and travel with them, sharing their passion discovering unique vineyards, outstanding wines, delicious food, and great adventure. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Jamie and Marcus here. And welcome to Wine Time Live, episode number 26. 26. Very, number 26. Very rare Pinot Noir. In fact, this is only the second time we've, we've ever, ever had, had a Pinot Noir like this. And this one happens to be from a vineyard we're from. The other one was from Austria, which we've never been to. And we had that a couple years ago. And this is just as good as the Austrian version we've had. Um, so, we are Marcus and Jamie, this is Wine Time Live, this is our podcast on our wine travel experience. Not so much about the wine, but about our experience with uh, or at the winery and our travel experience. Um, you can check out all of our travels um, at VIPWineryVacations.com, uh, VIPWineryVacations.com. You can join us on wine tours, excursions throughout Italy and throughout all of New York State, including the Hudson Valley, where we do our car, your driver. And you can always find us, we're going to always find us, Jamie. At aromatimebistro.com, VIP winerybacations.com, and where else? Um, well, they can always find us in person. <laughs> oh, in person at Aroma Time <laughs> at 165 Canal Street in Ellenville. Uh, New York, which is um, about an hour and a half north of New York City in the heart of the Hudson Valley uh, in in the uh, Catskill Mountains, the Schwangunk Mountains, beautiful area. If you're ever in this area, definitely go hiking and um, and check us out here yeah. at Aroma Time Bistro. So why don't you talk a little bit about the food that we do? Sure. And then uh, and then we'll jump right in to some um, wine. Some wine. So we so do. In the meantime, I poured the wine because I just Great. had to. So. Great. So we do farm to table cuisine. Uh, we are awarded best farm to table uh, New York State restaurant from Luxury Life magazine uh, two years ago. We're very happy to have that award. Uh, we're all about independent brands, uh, including spirits, wine, beer and small produced foods. And of course we're not perfect, but we're always making very conscious decisions. The food world can be very scary when it comes to real ingredients. And including, I don't know if you said our wine and spirits wine as well. Wine and spirits. We're extremely conscious about where everything is coming from, um, including behind the bar, which we find very, very important to some more support small independent um, spirits and, um, and wineries and, and breweries. So. Mm -hmm. That's so, super important. It's very frustrating when we go out to eat and we go to a farm to table restaurant and we sit at the bar because we always sit at the bar <laughs> and they have all big brand spirits and nothing local. We're like, well, if they say they're farm to table and the stuff they're showing off at the bar isn't what really in the kitchen is. Right. So that's frustrating for, for us as consumers. So uh, that's how we really judge a restaurant. So, but on to the wine. So Absolutely. we just got back from the Finger Lakes. Uh, we we're up there for, I don't know, the 10th time this year. Uh, visiting some of our favorite wineries and discovering new wineries. We went down a lake, uh, the east side of Cayuga Lake, which we've never been down before. We've gone the, I'm sorry, the west, east side, east side. We've gone down the west side, up and down the west side years ago. and Years oh, and years ago. And I would say, you know, I picked up a map of Cayuga Lake and I was looking at the west side and I knew none of the wineries. Uh, the wineries that we had gone to, I mean, some might still be there, but I didn't recognize any of the names. I mean, they're just growing so quickly in the Finger Lakes that it was, it's incredible. We need to go on the other side. We need right. to go to the west side. So the Finger Lakes has well over 150, 175 wineries. Believe it or not, the Hudson Valley has 59 wineries, almost 60 wineries here. I guessed here. 100 the other day because <laughs> I, I, I over guessed, but yes. So 60 wineries here in the Hudson Valley from Westchester all the way up to Albany is, is an awesome wine region, right? And we're the oldest wine region in the Shawangunk, uh, or the uh, Hudson Valley wine region. So, and we're just minutes from the Shawangunk Wine Trail, which is great here uh, in Ellenville. So we drove down the- East side east of side, Cayuga Lake. Cayuga Lake. And we saw Quarry Ridge, which we didn't stop in. Torrey Ridge, right? Torrey Ridge, Torrey Ridge, Torrey Ridge. Torrey Ridge. Ridge. We didn't stop in. We know that winery. We actually, interestingly enough, we were driving past, we saw Torrey Ridge, and we said, oh, let's go there. So we were going to turn around, and as we were going to turn around, we came up on heart and hand, hand, hands, heart which and hands. is um, the wine. One of the wine, the wine that we are drinking today comes from Heart and Hands. Yep. Um, it is uh, on the east side of Cayuga Lake, 
probably about, what would you say, 20 miles down from the Halfway, Geneva? halfway, halfway ish. Halfway, halfway yes. ish, yeah. So they are about, what, 15 years old? Yes. About 15 years old, uh, husband and wife who, who, who owns the winery. We met the wife, uh, we sat down and started tasting, and we immediately asked the person doing our tasting, do you have a wholesale company that you work with? Well, we've heard of Hearts and Hands before, and Hearts and Hands was written up in the New York Times recently. Just recently, yeah. 2020, yes. about one of the must-try New York State wines. They picked 10 wines that are must-tries in New York State and Heart and Hands. And we looked at each other and we're like, we've never been to Heart never and been. Hands. In fact, we don't even know where Heart and Hands is located. <laughs> so when we saw them, we're like, Let's go. light bulb, Hearts Let's and go. Hands, we've heard of them, Let's pull go. right in. So we pulled in. Um, we like to say it's unannounced because when, you, when you're re in industry and you go to you go to these places, you like to announce yourself ahead of time so they know you're coming. We sat down. We asked. We asked her, "Are you doing? Do you do wholesale? Who's your wholesale distributor?" And the owner heard in the background. Yeah. You know, she was a few tables away, um, in the tasting room, and she immediately came over and she goes, "Are you industry?" And we said, "Yes, we own a restaurant." And she politely said to the person that's doing. The tasting shows I'm going to take over the tasting, <laughs> but I'm going to give them a lot of information. This is a great learning opportunity for you to learn all about our wines because I'm going to talk all about our wines because the girl in the tasting room was new too. Yes. So she, she was a real, it was a really uh, great opportunity for her to do a training with, with, uh, with a new person. And um, it turns out, so what are we, what are we drinking right now? So Jamie? right now we are drinking a white, um, gosh, I keep pulling it. So this is interesting for me. I don't think I've ever opened a bottle like this that it's has, like a what zork. is it, a zork, right? It's like a zork. I believe so, it's like a zork. So it's it, a glass stopper. It, it stops on top. Whoa. <laughs> that, had, that came with a screw cap. Came with a screw cap and then a little like glass So it's kind of cool. Glass Ooh. plug on there. Um, if you can see that if you're watching this uh, Live. On video. If not, it's like a, it's, it's like a, bottle, a stopper. bottle stopper. Like a bottle stopper. But it's glass and the bottle is glass and so it's pretty cool. But this here, it's called Polarity. It's uh, 2019. Oops, sorry. I guess I should show the camera if you guys are watching. If you're watching, it looks like a rosé, but in fact, indeed, it is a Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir. Blanc. So it's a white, white Pinot, Pinot Noir. Noir. Pinot Noir being a red skin grape with white juice. This is juiced and then basically fermented without the skins. If you ferment it with the skins, it's going to be a red Pinot Noir. So there's not many wineries at all that make a white mm -hmm. Pinot Noir. But here's the neat thing. So this thing. is 100% Pinot Noir. And it's a Pinot, Pinot Noir Blanc is what they call it. And it's called their polarity. Here's the a neat... relation. So polarity means a relation between two opposite attributes or tendencies. Heart and Hands Wine Company white wine made from red pinot noir grapes is what right. they call it so but look at i mean if you're watching it's a little it's a little, colors, pinkish, a little pinkish a little pinkish so the interesting thing about about heart and hands is they are one of the very very few vineyards on a limestone plate uh there's a vineyard in buffalo that's on a limestone plate and the way the limestone plates work in upstate new york these geological plates is they they run across the state and they don't really dip into the Finger Lakes except into the top of Cayuga on the east side and it dips right down. Mm -hmm. They're really the only winery in the Finger Lakes that have this limestone on rich Cayuga, limes or, yeah, in all Finger Lakes. In all Finger Lakes. That has okay. this rich limestone soil which rounds out Pinot Noir. So with the acquisition of their land, they he worked for other well-known winemakers. Yes. He worked in Bordeaux, he worked in California. Um, they acquired this piece of land, 15 acres, and they started planting on it and, and expanded, and they sourced grapes from a couple other plots. But their, their estate-grown stuff is on this limestone soil mm. that really rounds out the Pinot Noir and does magic to Pinot Noir. They are known for their Pinot Noir. They are. So if anybody is to do a Pinot Noir Blanc, it's them. And I understand why they're doing Pinot Noir Blanc. Their Pinot Noirs are to die for. They are amazing. Their Chardonnays are spectacular. So tell tell the story. So, you know, we were talking about... Yes. We, we sat down. You didn't finish that. So you kind of went right into... So we sat down. We started getting a tasting from the owner. And gosh, is it Lori? Lori, I think her Lori name is. Lori and... I, I'm sorry, I forgot. We, um, we just met her. <laughs> we, ju we just met her, and actually, she said her name so quickly. We actually, I, I've forgotten, so I apologize if her name is not Lori. But um, she immediately started telling us a lot of information about the winery and about her and her husband. And you know, the the biggest thing for us is meeting the owners, talking to them, 
and starting to build relationships with them because that is why we travel to the wineries that we travel to on our VIP winery trips and that is really important to us. So she started to proceed to tell us about that that her husband only wanted to make Pinot Noir. Only, only wanted to make Pinot Noir. Only wanted to make Pinot Noir. And she looked at him and said, I don't want to go bankrupt. Like, we need to make other things, right? She says, you better make Riesling. Right. You better do other Riesling, wines. Pinot Noir is known in the Finger Lakes. Riesling is known in the Finger Lakes. And um, he worked for somebody who did Chardonnay. Oh, Cal uh, Calera. Calera out in California. Calera. Right, they do Pinot Noir and, and Chardonnay. Chardonnay. So he learned a lot out there. He did a um, stage, an internship out there. And um, and so she was like, I don't want to go broke. I, you know, I don't want to go bankrupt. We need to make other things other than Pinot Noir. So their Chardonnays were awesome. They're, they My made gosh. two Chardonnays that we tasted that were amazing. Um, their Rieslings. I, I got to tell you, there was not a bad wine that we tasted there. There wasn't. I mean, there was not a bad wine that we tasted. We visited a couple other vineyards and we visited three vineyards total that day or on that trip, on that, on si that, trip, on, yes. on, on, on that side of the lake. Mm -hmm. Only one we are comfortable bringing into our wine list, and which is this one here. Yes. Uh, as far as the wineries. And we hands. loved all of their wines at Heart and Hand so much, they were not pouring the polarity that day. Right. Right? So we were like, you know what? Let's buy a bottle. We'll buy a bottle. So we ended up buying a bottle to bring back to put on our Wine Time Live because we wanted to bring you this awesome bottle and, when, when we and go talk to, about that. When we go to wineries, they always comp us because we're industry. So they don't charge us for the taste. And we always leave a $20 tip for the person pouring. And we always feel compelled to buy a bottle mm -hmm. just because we want to support them in more than just buying their wine at the restaurant. So we always buy a bottle that we can't get in wholesale distribution that we can't find that we can bring back and do something like this with fun or to share it with friends. So, um, and of course they still give us an industry discount on top of it, um, which is great. It's a great perk to the industry. So all the three wineries we went to, they didn't charge us. Um, Two out of three, uh, one out of the three wineries we're bringing on our wine list, which is Heart and Hands. The other two wineries, which I won't mention their names, one had a great view, one had a great outside, like, if go you want to go there, hang out, listen to music, amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't think their wines filled my palate so much, and they died off pretty easily. And we didn't need them on our list. Like, they weren't something that, that we it wasn't a wow felt factor. that we would bring onto our There's nothing that would be so. like, oh my gosh, where'd you get this wine, Marcus? It's just a run of the mill, whatever. Right. This, these wines here from Heart Phenomenal. and Hands, there's Phenomenal a reason why the New York wines. Times wrote them up. Yeah. There's a 100% reason why, because they are making world-class Pinot Noir on this limestone soil, and it's just amazing. And so, their story is phenomenal. And their story, yeah. Right? Yep. Like, I just, I like to hear a husband and a wife combo that open up a business together. That balance that each other. That balance each other and, and put their all into Because you and I balance each other. Because I'll want to do. do something. You're like, well, there's no way we're doing that. <laughs> you better think of an alternative or another option with it or expand upon it. Or there's no way we're doing just that or this or that. So you and I balance each other. And, and sometimes said that, you do it anyway. <laughs> if I feel strong enough. <laughs> but, no, we, we do balance each other very well we work well together and um, we enjoy we enjoy doing that together so um, um, so yeah so let's so see. here's the thing about Pinot Noir many of you have had Pinot Noir Blanc before um, and they call it Blanc de Noir in the champagne world so if you ever get a bottle of champagne and it says Blanc de Noir it's made from Pinot Noir grapes and it's a dark grape on a white wine or white sparkling white bubbles so it's not uncommon to make white wine or, or champagne out of Pinot Noir, but it's uncommon to make a white wine still, a still white wine, a no still bubbles, white, wine, right. white out of Pinot Noir. So that's more uncommon. Um, so like I said, we had an Austrian one a couple years ago that was just dynamite and amazing. And, and I knew that within the restaurant world, in our restaurant business, like we, the wine geeks that come in that love like, mm. like Marcus just surprised me. I would bring them that bottle yeah. and say, try it, knowing that they like white wines. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? What is this? What in the world is it? I would feel comfortable with this. With any wine geek that walks in here 100%. that says, Marcus, exper I drink white wine, experiment with me. I'd be glad to blindly open this wine for them to try and taste and try to sell it to them uh, because I'm just confident that this- It's delicious. The, this I mean, you cannot look at it, right? Because you immediately think rosé um, and it does not taste like rosé. And who would order a white Pinot Noir? 
Exactly. Totally. Very rarely would somebody order a white Pinot Noir. Right, but right. It's, you have to be a wine geek to understand yes, or know or absolutely. even experiment or be experiment, have an exp, uh, experiment palate to do that. So yeah, it's just totally surprised me. Like, and it's great when people come into the restaurant. because We love doing that. They're like, Marcus, you know what I like. I want to spend 60 bucks or 70 bucks or 40 bucks. Give me something white, crisp. Give me something white and oaky. Give me something... Um, red and medium bodied or give me and I love when guests do that and they leave it in our hands because we have and if so you, many and if you want us to do that for you you know we would totally do that for you so I'm very pesky tonight we, we thought years ago like why don't we do a um, a fun thing where we would like brown bag a wine for you and if you could guess the region, the varietal, whatever, we would take 10% off, 10% off, 10% off. <laughs> so you can literally get like 50% off a bottle of wine yeah. and we brown bagged <laughs> on you. And you could reference a list if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, and you'd say, no, I want a red wine in you know the 30 to $50 category. And you get like three or four guesses of this, this, and this, and we take a certain percentage off. I think it would be a fun game. I to think play. that would be a fun game. Yeah. Too, yeah, maybe we should do a wine dinner like that. Your wine dinner could be free tonight. Right. Your wine <laughs> dinner, that's, that's a cool theme. That's a cool theme. Free if you guess the wine, the, right. the brown bag wine, brown bag wine, brown bag wine, you guess the region, the great varietal, varietal um, we will, um, yeah, Your wine dinner's that. on us. That's a great idea. And you have a little oh. little survey, and you can't, you won't know your answers till the end of the meal. And I don't know what happened here. Something happened again with the, the color. Yeah, sure. the color is, is off, off on, on our one video so tonight. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, but yeah, so talk a little bit more about um, our experience at Heart and Hand. So yeah, it was a great experience overall. We cannot wait to get their wines in. We've kind of contacted the distributor and we we would love to take people there. Only problem is there's not much going on on that side of Cayuga Lake. The inn, inns in Aurora, which is these beautiful five Gorgeous property inns. inns in Aurora, New York, where Wells College is, are stunning and amazing and drop-dead If you dead ever gorgeous. get to that area, stop in, stay there. It is worth the stay. It's spectacular. The hospitality is amazing, um, and it, it's really it's really great. So um, uh, there we go. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Um, so... You know, maybe we'll take a trip up there one day if anybody wants to join, join us. us. Um, you know, this yeah. this this would be a great thing for when we do our regular wine trips to the Finger Lakes. And if you want to stay an extra day, meet us. Let's go here for an extra excursion. Yeah. I think that would be a fantastic idea to tack it on as an extra day for people. And then we stay, you know, at, right. at the inns. Because at the inns. those inns are, are amazing. And I, I highly, highly recommend staying there. So, um, but, so you know, it. traveling with us is, is an experience and you get to, you get the red carpet treatment uh, no matter where we go. And we'd love to take you on a wine trip with us. And speaking of wine trips, we have a wine trip coming up, don't we? Italy, right? Well, we have one coming up sooner than Italy. Oh, Italy, November. November is the Finger Lakes. We're not going to Italy in November. No, we're going. Yes. We're going. We're going to the Finger Lakes in November. April twenty twenty two is Italy. Um, on the on the mess on the phone today with our contacts in Italy, finalizing some more details. But this November, what the dates in November? Uh, November fifth through the seventh. Uh, we will be in um, Watkins Glen, and we will be going to wineries on Cuca Lake um, and maybe Seneca. I think that you've planned it Cuca out. Cuca and Seneca. Cuca and Seneca. Um, and some of the wineries that we haven't been able to get to because of COVID, um, if you're listening to us, it is 2021. So November of 2021, uh, we will be going up to the Finger Lakes. We'd love for you to join us. We meet up in Watkins Glen, and we take you to our friends' wineries, and you travel with us. and. Uh, Enjoy wine, food, and, and an awesome experience with uh, Marcus and I yep. up in the Finger Lakes. Eight hundred sixty-five dollars so. a person. That's double occupancy. A little more for single occupancy. That trip is almost sold out. VIPWineryVacations.com. Or if you go to our new domain name, now go to VIPWineryVacations.com. Mm -hmm. VIPWineryVacations.com. You'll see the best information there. We can send you an e-contract to uh, do an electronic contract to secure. Uh, small deposit and then um, and we, can, and we, we do, do payment, payment plan, we do payment plan. So, that's probably fine um, and then if you want to travel with us to Italy uh, we are hoping fingers crossed that we can reconvene our Italy trips in yep. April of 2022 so for less than a cup of coffee a day you can go to Italy with us in 2022 mm -hmm. literally if you go to Starbucks every day get a cup of coffee if you don't do that and you save that money you can go to Italy with us um, that's how far out it is, April 2022. Super excited about that. Like, really I know. Excited. We need to get over to... Apulia. <laughs> yeah. Apulia. So, we have a lot more Apulian wines coming in. We had a new Campania wine come in last week with Campania. A new Apulian wine. We got some more Fiano coming in from Valone. 
Uh, we're working with that winery very closely down in Lecce. A lot of wineries really closely. So um, Gianfranco Fino, uh, we've kind of lost touch with Gianfranco Fino um, because they don't import don't their wines any anymore. Right. So Luigi, our tour guide, Mar he's like, Marcus, I know we've been there and we've met them and we know her because we've seen her at all the tastings here in New York. But they haven't been here in four years because their wines aren't imported. Luigi's like, I know them personally which what he said to me today he goes oh. i know the sales salesman there we buy their wines where i'm at i know them okay he goes so we'll, we'll you know make everything happen tomorrow is what he said and make that connection go around and, awesome. and, and make sure you have know, a great experience great. at john franco fino um so if we don't if we've lost contact like in a winery that doesn't export anymore and because you call there and nobody speaks english sometimes luigi um is our you know he just is knows everybody he's our tour yeah. guide uh, good friend for the last 12 and years. And we met him through an experience. We met so, him at a wedding. At a wedding that we were at. In Arezzo. Um, you know, in Arezzo um, 10 years ago. Yeah, um, 11 years at, ago. Yeah. Almost 11 years ago already. And we met him at the uh, at the inn, we, well, not inn, but the villa, villa that we were staying at. He was, the, he was the sommelier there. Yep. We stayed in contact with him and, you know, full cir circle around, he's now helping us with our wine trip. So yep. um, he is our contact over in Italy that we use um, for... So even 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 our tours are about relationships. Not only are the wineries relationship-based, but even Luigi, who's our tour guide, um, is, is, a, is a relationship-based friend of ours. And then um, uh, Diego, who helps us, is also Luigi's friend, who is now our friend. So it all goes around, and it's all about, you know... Building relationships. Building relationships. I mean, that is 100% that is yep. what it's about. And we love to build relationships with our guests, with our distributors, with our... Uh, with our um, we want to do business know. with friends. Yeah. And, it, and we have a wine tasting tomorrow, actually, with somebody that we haven't seen in a while who called and was thinking about us. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. So uh, Maria, who yep. worked for a company um, that did all who Spanish Who got us these amazing... Amazing Spanish We have wines. some of our best Spanish wine tourists from the company yeah. Maria worked at, and she has some of these wines. And she has some of the wines now. Oh. So she's coming by tomorrow to taste us on some wine. So super, super excited about that. Um, and so, again, we've known her for years. She's gone through a couple... She's worked for a couple of different uh, companies. She worked for right. one one for the most of the time. For most of the time. This is her second one because they, they actually I sold. Thought she, I thought she was with one other one no, before that. No, no, she was with the one. Okay. She was with Frontier, and they do all, all Spanish wines, but Frontier, Tom sold. Tom sold, retired, and sold um, pre-COVID. He actually sold March 1st of 2020. Um, and right Tom, before Tom hooked us up with some amazing wineries in Spain. All he did was Spanish wines. He, he's like the Spanish authority. Small, little boutique, family-run operations. And so he sold... The new distributor um, couldn't get an importer in New. Uh, I'm sorry, distributor in New York, because the importer is now out of California, and none of the wines came back into the U.S. So we, Soplo. If you ever had Soplo at Aroma Time, from Rafael, we, Rafael, right? Rafael Cambro, Ca yeah, amazing. Uh, Ochoa, the oh, the Ochoa. Ochoa is so good. I cannot wait for the Ochoa um, Rosé. Rosé. Yeah. Ochoa Rosé and the Vonier and Chardonnay blend was great, but their Rosé amazing. Amazing. And Ochoa was like. The, the wine of the king or something of Navarra in Spain. It was just an amazing story. And so, so I am super excited about tasting her wine. Yeah, it's been 18 months. We lost yeah. contact with these yes. for 16 months. Yeah. And now we're able to hopefully get these wines again. She's working with a distributor that has them. Super and excited. So she calls and goes, hey, I'm back. The wines <laughs> are back in New York. Um, so great. So she'll be here tomorrow tasting us on some wines. So. Yeah, maybe we'll do a little Facebook Live. Probably. During that. <laughs> so uh, Excellent. Make sure you're following us on Facebook, Aroma Time, T-H-Y-M-E, Bistro, on Facebook and um, Aroma Time, T H Y M E Bistro Farm to Table on Instagram and VIP Winery Vacations on Instagram and Facebook. All right, folks, that is it. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in. Um, and uh, you can find this on iTunes, iHeart, and anywhere else I uh, podcasts are shown. Absolutely. Hope everybody has a good night. Cheers or day. <laughs>